The Gaelic Athletic Association, or the GA as it's more commonly known, is part of the fabric of Irish society. It has touched the hearts of Irish people at home and abroad since its foundation in 1884. It's been with us in the bad times and the good times. It's part of what makes us Irish. It will be with us forever. In Kilkenny, as in any other county, when the GA Gales get together for a few pints, the debate always turns to who were the greatest players of the past and the present, and how would they fare against one another if they ever played. To add a bit of folklore and clarity to the debate, we decided to pick a team from the 1920s up to the present, captained by Lowry Marr, to play the four in a row team, captained by Henry Shefflin, in what turned out to be the greatest game that was never played. I hope you enjoy it. It's called The Field of Dreams. It was the night to dream to drive for five and ended up in tears. I overheard these three old gales, they were having a few beers. They recall great games and legends' names I remembered as a child. Oh, I'd love to see them play again for us just one last time. I dreamt that night of those hurling men that were swirling round my head. Some of them gladly still alive, but some are sadly dead. Then suddenly it dawned on me, let's pick a legends team to play King Henry and the boys in what's called the Field of Dreams. I sat beside these three old men and told them of our goal. The game would be next Sunday in a field off Jones's Road. We need the greatest from the past to test Brian Cody's team, for it's not often guys will get to play up in the Field of Dreams. So here we go. In goal we had a choice of two to wear the keeper's crown. Their skiing from famous Bennis Bridge and Welch from Thomas Town. Both wore the black and amber with courage and give all, but no finer sight than Ollie bursting out with hurling ball. At two, three and four we knew for sure we'd need three men of steel. Fan Pa and Dick O'Hara, they'll do the job we feel. Against Taggy and Fast Eddie, the quick hands of Richie Power. If the score from play you'd have to say, it will be their finest hour. Pat Henderson's at centre back, the best by far around. In crucial times he cleared his lines with drop shots off the ground. Joe Hennessy is on the wing, this maestro stands alone, with feeling on the other side, the icon from Tullerone. At centre field is Lowry Marr with Cummins by his side, the stick man and the strong man, from them you could not hide. The day Frank shook Tim Crowley, he felt it to his toes, you could hear the shot in Eustace Town, or so the story goes. The leader on the 40 was Big Christy from Glenmore, with DJ and Jim Langton, their deeds are now folklore. The twinkle toad lean Fenley on the full line cute but fair. The greatest green flag poacher in Ireland round the square. And so the corner forwards, two heroes of renown. The language skillful Billy Fitz, the Fenian from Johnstown. And Eddie Kerr, the gold machine, the best I've ever seen. For one last time you'll see them shine up in the field of dreams. The say great teams depend upon the men that's on the line. The skiing, the link Jim Tracy, Claus Dunn from fame Moonkind. The Cloney Jack Mulcahy, Ted Carroll and Liam O'Brien, we need them all come Sunday as the clock ticks to full time. So on the day we made our way up to the field of dreams. The Hall O'Hare was on the air, he welcomed two great teams. When Lowry led the legends out, we seemed to pause in time. No longer were they o'er the hill but young men in their prime. The hurling field was throbbing with the biggest crowd I've seen. We all stood up and faced the flag and sang her on Levine. The king and his men stood proudly, their wish came true at last, to play against their childhood gods, the legends of the past. The first half passed so quickly, there's a minute left to play, when Shefflin hits a rasper, it's heading all the way, but someone sticks the hurley out to deny a certain score, it's only with the ball in hand, the crowd cry out for more. The battle fiercely rages as the second half unfolds, it's pint for pint at either end but no sign of the goals. Then in a flash Fitzpatrick's dash cause mayhem in the square. It's just a small shimazzle, beams the great Mihara here. The crowd are gripped with tension as the clock ticks to full time. The legends use their substitutes, they've great men on the line. The old boys grin, it's ours to win, but to me they've spoken haste. You can't rule out the present team of Henry and the greats. The game was in the melting pot, it swung from end to end. Lowry's men refused to wilt, the kings refused to bend. Then suddenly from 90 yards, the game's pulled out of fire. Suffice to say a score from play, the game went to the wire. 
I stood there proud and shed a tear as the ref blew for full time. The two gracious teams stood arm in arm, the band played all Lang Syne. The field of dreams is silent now, if only it could speak. About this epic battle, was it victory or defeat? So who won the game, it will remain a secret for all time. I'm glad I heard those three old men, their memories were sublime. Let's now look to the future, with more titles to the fore, as the black and amber proudly waves in its homeland by the Noor. This story ends where it began, in a pub with a few beers. The legends team was all a dream, you can't turn back the years. This greatest game was never played, life's never what it seems. The old boys cling to memories of what's called the field of dreams. <laughs>